friends, my name is Deanna and I'm here at the Bell Road branch of the Newburgh Chandler Public Library. And we're going to imagine a story. Imagine a story, what will you see? Where will you go? What will you be? It's time for you to go on an adventure with me. Today's story is Jack and the Beanstalk. And like all good stories, it starts with once upon a time. Once upon a time, there was a family that was so poor, they didn't have anything to eat. And so the mother told her son, Jack, Jack, you're going to have to take our cow to the market and sell him so he can, we can buy some food. So Jack tied a rope to the cow and started down the road to go to the market. Before he got to the market, he ran across a man. That's me. Well, hello, Jack. That's a mighty fine cow you got looking there. How about I give you something for it? Well, that would save me a trip to town. How about some beans? Beans for a cow? Yes, but these are magic beans. Well, okay then, said Jack. And he gave the cow to the man and was so proud to take the beans back home and show his mother. His mother, however, was not happy. She was very upset, so angry that she threw the beans out the window. Poor Jack went to bed without any supper. Very hungry. I wonder what's happening with those beans. I'm a little bean, small and round. Bury me deep in the soft ground. Sprinkle me with water and sunshine too. Watch me grow as tall as you. Well, the next morning, Jack looked up, and he was amazed to see a gigantic beanstalk that went up and up into the sky. He decided he needed to climb that beanstalk to see what was at the top. Jack climbed up and up through the clouds until he found himself in a huge castle. He ran behind the big door and hid behind a plant. Soon he heard some gigantic steps. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell a young man who better run but as much as the giant looked around, he didn't see Jack hiding behind the plant. Wife, he called. Yes, giant? Bring me my magic hen. Okay, dear. And so she brought him a magic hen. And the magic hen clucked and squawked and clucked and squawked until finally it laid a golden egg. And Jack was amazed. The giant sat there with his hand until he just fell right asleep. So Jack sneaked over and he grabbed that magic hen and they clucked down the beanstalk. Well, the next morning, Jack decided it might be worth a trip back up that beanstalk. So up he went again. Can you help me climb with Jack? Ready? Climbing the beanstalk, climbing the beanstalk, and he hid behind the same plant that he hid behind before. Sure enough, in comes the giant. 
Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell a young man who better run. But it looked as much as he could. He didn't see Jack hiding behind the plant. Wife, he called. Yes, dear? Bring me my magic harp. And so he brought the magic harp, or she brought the magic harp, which immediately began to play beautiful music, a soft lullaby. So, of course, the giant fell asleep. Well, Jack, again, was amazed and thought of all the wonderful things he could do with that harp. He slipped over to the table and he took the harp, but in his rush, <gasps> he dropped the harp and it immediately started to make some noise <gasps> and sing and that woke up the giant. Jack started climbing down the vine as fast as he could, but the giant, whose steps were so big, shook the whole castle. Well, Jack got down to the bottom of the mine and he ran and he found his ax and he chopped and he chopped until the vine came tumbling down. And that giant was never heard from again. And that's the end of our story. Except to say that don't feel too sorry for that giant. I think he did just fine. And I've been reading a lot of stories about Jack and the Beanstalk and it turns out that that harp and that hen didn't belong to that giant in the first place. They belonged to Jack's father many, many years ago. So Jack and his mother lived happily ever after, and they shared the golden eggs with all the other people in the village, and they shared the music with the people in the village, too. Now, I've been thinking I would like to take a closer look at those magic beans, wouldn't you? What's your favorite bean? Is your favorite bean green beans? No. Is your favorite bean lima beans? No. Is your favorite bean jelly beans? Because that's my favorite bean. Five little jelly beans. Oh, I wish I had more. I'll eat the green one. And now there are four. Four little jelly beans. Tasty as can be. I'll eat the, which one should I eat? The blue one? And now there are three. Three little jelly beans. Only a few. I'll eat the yellow one. And now there's just two. Two little jelly beans. Eating them is fun. I'll eat the purple one. And now there's just one. One little jelly bean. The last one for me. I'm not going to eat this one. I'll share it with you. And we can be as happy as can be. Now, jelly beans are probably not the healthiest thing you could eat. I think the green beans that came off Jack's vine were probably better. We have a book in the library called Jack and the Beanstalk and the French Fries. Because in this story, instead of climbing the beanstalk, Jack and his mother just keep eating the green beans because they're free. And they have green bean salad and green bean soup and peanut butter and green bean sandwiches until everybody in the village is sick of green beans. Jack climbs up the vine to find out that the giant and his wife are eating green beans too. And the giant is getting pretty sick of green bean and peanut butter sandwich also. So they devise a plan to grow a garden because they want something different. So in that garden, There are things that grow above the ground, like our beanstalk, and there's things that grow below the ground. And I'm going to have you help me decide. So this is an onion. 
Do you think the onion grows below the ground or above the ground? Well, if you said below the ground, you are correct. How about corn? Do you think corn grows above the ground or below the ground? Right again, corn grows above the ground. In fact, if you're driving around right now, you're probably seeing a lot of corn growing above the ground. This is my favorite, tomatoes. Do tomatoes grow above the ground or below the ground? They grow above the ground. And this one's kind of hard. This is celery. We don't grow this in southern Indiana. But if you've ever seen celery growing, it grows above the ground. It has stalks and leaves. How about a carrot? You are right. Below the ground. And potatoes, which are my favorite too because they make french fries, those grow under the ground too. Now I was thinking about Jack climbing up that stalk and I was thinking poor Jack probably was in such a hurry he missed a lot of the things that were hiding in that stalk. Camouflaged, you know, things that are green that wouldn't show up. So we're going to look and see if we can see some of the things that Jack might have missed. So I'm thinking of something that has two eyes. It hops really far and says, rub it, rub it. Can you see it? It's a frog. Now I'm thinking of something that doesn't have to be green. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's yellow. But if you slice it up and put it in a pie, oh my goodness, is it delicious. Can you see it? It's an apple. How about if Jack was in such a hurry, he left behind something, like something that keeps him warm. Maybe it got snagged on a branch. Do you see it? It's his coat. And if you're very, very lucky, you might have seen the leprechaun with his tall green hat. And he might have had a four-leaf clover. The one thing I'm glad Jack didn't see, and I don't think I'd ever want to see it either, it's long, and it's slithery, and it's scary to some people. Some people like them. Oh my goodness. What is it? they all camouflage in all that green. And in some of our books from the library, they have a lot of pictures that show things that you have to find in the vines. Well, lastly, boys and girls, I was going to have you help me make some soup because I'm getting very hungry. So I have silly soup and I have yummy soup and I have my things from the garden. But you know what? I found some other things out in the garden. Somebody left their crayons outside. And there was a hat out there. And there was an old shoe sitting around. And a light bulb. So you have to help me decide. Do these things belong in the silly soup or in the yummy soup? Let's start with the shoe. Would you put that in? Yummy soup or silly soup? Me too. I think silly soup is where that goes. How about the corn? Well, that's pretty yummy. So I think I'm going to put that in the yummy soup. And the carrot? Well, carrots and corn are pretty good in soup. And don't forget the onion. How about the crayons? It might make your tongue turn colors but I think I'd rather have that over here with the shoe and the hat. But I do like celery 
and I do like tomatoes, so that just leaves me with my light bulb. I don't think you can eat a light bulb, so I'm going to put that in the silly soup as well. Well, I'm cooking it, and it smells pretty good, so I think that's maybe time for me to say goodbye. Before I do, I want to show you we have lots of books at our library that talk about Jack and the Beanstalk. We have Wayne Meta and the Cornstalk. She's from Texas, and her giant says, fee, fi, fo, fat. I think I smell a cowgirl brat. And we have Jack and the Giant Barbecue, where that giant stole Jack's father's favorite barbecue recipe, and Jack has to get it back. So until I see you next time, remember, we wave goodbye like this, we wave goodbye like this, we clap our hands and stomp our feet. We wave goodbye like this. Goodbye, and I'll see you next time.